Before we start the video, we're gonna sing you an impromptu song about area. <laughs> area, 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 area. The square is eight times a wild rectangle is length times width. Parallelogram is B times H, where B is base and H is height. Area of triangle is half B and H. Take half base, multiply height. Area of trapezoid is how I'm half of the height with base 1 plus base 2. Area of regular polygon is half AP, where A is a bottom and B is perimeter. A is sort of like radius. Half a er, area of circle is pi r squared. Now we can calculate area, so let's cut to the intro. Oh no! I thought I had enough peanut butter to cover this entire area of this bread! Eh, no worries. I could easily fix this mistake by buying some at the grocery store. However, some mistakes can easily be fixed like this. If you were, let's say, a construction worker, for example, he can overbuy supplies or underbuy supplies if you don't bother to calculate area coverage. This can lose money and waste time and make your boss very mad. Let's do another example with this piece of bread. Let's say I'm a real estate agent and I own this piece of bread, a uh, piece of land right here. Um, I like to call it peanut butter land. Now I've got to sell this land per square foot for let's say uh, $12.50 per square foot, for example. Um, we'll, scale, we'll scale this piece of land right here. Let's say it's a square piece of land. We'll, we'll scale it as one centimeter per one foot. So, the area of this lot, land plot right here, peanut butter land, is going to be length times width, as you've probably learned from my beautiful singing at the beginning of the video. We know that the rectangle is length times width. So, let's take measurements, shall we? We'll scale this, as I said, one centimeter to one foot. So, let's see. The length of this peanut butter land is four centimeters, so four feet, and the width of my land is 6.5 centimeters, which is 6.5 feet. So let's, uh, I'll crop this piece of bread out, or I'll crop this piece of land out, and we'll calculate using this. So here we have peanut butter land, which is 4 feet in length and 6.5 feet in width. And a real estate owner is selling this plot of land. A, a very small plot of land. Let's say you're buying it for a lemonade stand. Okay, We have 4 feet by 6.5 feet, and the area of a rectangle is length times width. So we take 4 feet times 6.5 feet, and for the total area of this plot of land, is going to be 26 feet squared. So since the total plot of land is 26 feet squared and the real estate owner selling this plot of land for $12.50 per square feet, we take that, multiply it by 26, and we get the total amount in, where, in which the real estate owner is selling it for. And you'll be buying your new plot of land for $325. Must be a nice lemonade stand you're building. Now all these geometrical ideas didn't appear out of nowhere. We had past civilizations where we have to thank for that. Now, geometry dates back all the way to the year 3000 BCE. And 
it was thought to be either the, or the Babylonians and the Indians to be the first peoples to develop the idea of geometry. Before we start talking about Babylonian geometry, let's please note that there are many, many civilizations that's contributed to the area of geometrical figures and applications. We're going to start out by talking with Babylonian, then we're going to talk about the Greek contribution, and we're going to end it with the Chinese contribution. Now, please note, many civilizations helped press the idea of area on geometrical figures and applications, but we are going to talk about these three. They, I think they're the top three, but that's debatable. Now first we're going to talk about Babylonian geometry. Now geometry wasn't the only advancements they made in mathematics. They also made advancements in algebra. They made advancements in number theory. They even developed a numerical system with cuneiform notation. Uh, they didn't have a zero in it and they did use base 60, but they did develop a numeral system. Um, let's go into the area, how they did area and what their applications and figures were. Now, the Babylonians didn't understand geometry right away. They were playing around with geometry until they understood it. Like, for example, they were taking shapes and they were cutting them up, they were rearranging the shapes, they were forming new types of shapes, and until they were, until they built a foundation of understanding it. They, ought, they eventually learned how to take the area of some other shapes, such as circles such as trapezoids, such as rectangles, and s some others. They even had an application problem written in the famous Rhind Papyrus. The Rhind Papyrus, as shown, is a great example of evidence that shows that the Babylonians used applications of area. For example, let's take a look at this problem written in the Rhind Papyrus. Papyrus. The question states, Example of a round field of diameter 9 ket, what is its area? And the solution they approach was take away 1 ninth of the diameter, which is 1, the remainder is 8, multiply 8 times 8, and it makes 64. Therefore it contains 64 setat of land. Now this was their way of calculating the area of a circle and their result was 64, which was a remarkably accurate answer. So we know the area of a circle is pi r squared, so if it's 9 ket, we get the radius as 4.5 ket, and pi r squared is going to be exactly 63.6172512, goes on and on, it's an irrational number. So our our solution of 63.6172511 on and on compared to 64 is very close. It's a very close answer. I mean, the absolute relative error percentage is only 0.6%. So it's not a very, it's not a bad calculation at all for the time of the Babylonians. Let's move on to the Greek period now. <laughs> This, this period in the Greeks, the Greeks, I believed, were the best civilization to develop to geometry. I think that it was the golden age of geometry. They even had several mathematicians that gave ideas to geometry. There was a mathematician that was famous, the biggest mathematician. He was known as the father of geometry. I mean, the Greek period was just a pure golden age for geometry. Who was the father of geometry, you ask? Well, Euclid of Alexandria is known as the father of geometry. Now, Euclid's full name is unknown, but we often refer to, we do refer to him as Euclid of Alexandria. But Euclid was the father of geometry because he created a famous book about geometry called Euclid's Elements. And Euclid's Elements is a series composed of 13 books that covered a bunch of new, different topics new to that period about geometry. He used axioms, he defined definitions, he did a bunch of new things 
and brought a new area to geometry. And in that book covered a bit about area, but we're going to talk about a different mathematician for who I think was good with area, which was Pythagoras. Now, if you walk to someone on the street and mention Pythagoras, they'll mention the Pythagorean, they'll probably mention him, they'll probably know him from the Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem, Ugh. which is stated as a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is to find the lengths of a right triangle. And this would, this was a famous theorem, a bunch of students are taught it in middle school, high school. And Pythag the Pythagorean theorem back in the day, w when Pythagoras uh, brought it to light, it was, he didn't he didn't really invent it, but he brought it to fame, for to say. But he did the Pythagorean theorem a bit different. He used areas instead of lengths, if that makes sense. Let's cut to a picture and explain it. Now here we are using Pythagorean theorem of how we use it today to find the side of a right triangle. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And we see the solution here of how it's found. And as mentioned, Pythagoras didn't use this method. He used the notation of area to find the sides of a right triangle. So here we see a picture, an example of right triangle in the center with sides A, B, and C. Now the green shading area on A is an area of a square. What he did was make a square on the side and got the area of that green square. He did the same thing for the square of B and the square of C. Now his Pythagorean theorem stated that this that the area of square A plus the area of square B is equal to the area of square C. So this is how Pythagoras used the concept of area to find uh, solutions to missing sides of a right triangle. Later on, we had the Chinese making a book called The Nine Chapters of Mathematical Art, which covered a vast majority of knowledge on the areas of ge geometrical figures and applications. In fact, in chapter one, they, in part of and part of their 38 problems included they had area application problems along with several whoa <laughs> along with several different areas of different shapes such as triangles rectangles trapezoids circles and tons of other shapes please consider that were there were tons more civilizations that helped mold aerial related problems into applications and figures to what we have now today. This is thanks to our past advancements to continue on with the legacy. This has been Math Talk. I thank you for watching.